Hello gamers, it's Spunky Junkie here, back at you with another epic Melver guide. You might be asking yourself, Jordan, didn't you just make a Melver guide about cooking literally two days ago? Well, after posting that epic and amazing shit uh, guide, I have decided to revise and make an in-depth guide about cooking, because as you see, things in Melver aren't as simple as they seem on the surface. So without further ado, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's get into the in-depth look at what seems simple on the surface, but is so complex, it'll have you divorcing your wife by the end of the month. So to start off with, we're going to be covering the basics. What is cooking? Well, if you don't know, cooking is a very simple thing in Melbourne Idol, just as it might be in RuneScape, but it differs greatly from RuneScape. Firstly, you're going to see we have three cooking pots, or well, one cooking pot, one furnace, and one f cooking fire. So, you can active cook your food, which we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to select our, let's just say, let's just do carp, because I know I have carp. And then we're going to do an active cook. So now we have this active cooking. Uh, and then we have a basic furnace, and we can go ahead and passive cook on it by selecting another recipe. And then we can passive cook. And we can do this also for the strong pot as well. So I'll go ahead and make some basic soup. Activate. It's that simple. You cook food, you get cooked food in return for higher HP yielding uh, items. And we can passive cook on these, which takes five times longer or something like that. Or maybe it's ten times longer. But it doesn't look like it uh, is that long. Um, anyways, it takes longer and you won't get XP or mastery for passive cooking. And you can only passive cook while you're active cooking something. So, it's a nice way to get some extra food a little bit faster. So here are the upgrades for the basic furnace, the strong pot, and the U cooking fire. These are going to be upgrades you can get in the shop. Also, if you need some secondary ingredients, they can also be bought in the shop. So another thing worth noting for sure is that there is perfect food that you're able to get. Well, what is perfect food? You might be asking. Well, worry no more. Perfect food is when you embrace your inner Gordon Ramsay and you cook a little carp with the star by it. So, based on your skill or mastery in a specific food, you have a higher chance to cook a specific food as perfect food, which will be indicated by a little star, and it will heal you for 10% more than its regular food cooked. So, pretty cool, pretty awesome. Also worth noting, you can turn this off if you need it for things uh, like agility courses and stuff, if you don't want perfect food. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty nice, just a nice little thing. As you can see, I have 40% uh, percent on my carp it's 40 percent to be perfect food let's get into the masteries so we're going to see our total mastery here is pretty simple 25 percent we get a five percent increased chance to get double food who doesn't love double food 50 percent chance we get a 10 percent to preserve raw food in cooking and 95 percent mastery all food heals for 10 percent more that is insane and we're going to continue on with the masteries for a specific cooking food. Each level gives us a 0.1% success rate, capped at 99%, with the exception of gloves or cooking skill cape. At every 10 levels for that specific food, we get a plus 5% perfect cook chance for this item, and then 99, 50% perfect cook chance for this item. This item product heals you for an extra 20% when eaten, which is epic, gamers. Make sure you're getting those masteries for your food. Now on to the in-depth part of this guide. You might be asking yourself, well, Jordan, how do I know what to cook? What's the most efficient for my level? And I can answer that question for you. Well, a shout out to my good friend over on Reddit, Steel Sauce. He actually answered this for me and brought a very useful spreadsheet. So I'll leave the spreadsheet in the description. But if you're too lazy for that, we're going to go over what the best thing uh to cook for hp per hour goes it is going to be oh this also includes gathering time it is chicken soup active carrot cake and whales passive baby that's what you want your cooking to look like to be most efficient 
HP per hour. Now, it is based on level and masteries and all that good stuff. So there's a spreadsheet if you want to try it in the description below. Um, I personally will not be using the spreadsheet for I am 2P brained, but it's there for those of you who want it. Herblore boosts. We're going to be going over the generous cook potion. At level mastery 1, this will give you a 10% chance at doubling items in cooking. And then goes all the way up to 50% at level 4. So these are pretty epic potions. They're made with mantelime herbs and two cooked swordfish. So you definitely want to be using these potions as much as you can when cooking. Highly efficient. And heck, maybe even use some cooking swordfish since that's what it requires to make these potions. Hashtag gains. Summons. We can't forget one of the most useful things in the game and one of the most cool and fun skills. And one of the longest ones to train, honestly. So we're going to go over some of the more useful skills for cooking specifically. Or one of, the, one of the, some of the most useful summons for cooking specifically. So we have pig. This is cooking's very own summon. 10% chance to preserve resources in cooking. Pretty basic. It's going to get you some XP and all that. So how do we craft pig, you might be wondering. Real quick. So to make a pig, it's going to be 8 green shards, 6 gray shards, and then multiple different types of fish. Your most efficient might be what I would assume to be like whale, because it only costs one whale or one K fish or shark. Alright, so what are some useful synergies in cooking summons? Well, we have Int and Pig, which is a 15% chance to receive plus one food in cooking. Cannot be doubled. And then we have just some pretty basic ones, like Pig and Bear, Generous, Cook. Potions now provide 200% charges, which is pretty nice. I'd say that one's definitely worth using. Uh, but other than that, the only one I really want to go over in this video is going to be Mole and Pig. Cooking success rate is capped at 75%. So that means you have a 25% chance to burn your food. Ooh, well, what's the upside, you might be asking? Well, every time you burn food, you get 100 coal ore when failing to cook food. So this is the fastest way to get coal in the game, and I plan to make a video covering this in a few days to come. Uh, awesome stuff. Also, shout out to my friend on Reddit for... Uh, giving this information to me. I did find it later on on the wiki. Uh, so awesome, awesome stuff, guys. The very pet you can get for cooking, if you don't want to spoil it, click off now. But anyways, his name is Chris, and he's a cow. What exactly does Chris do, you might be asking? Well, let's take a look. Chris gives you a plus 5% chance to double items in cooking. And due to the complex formulas of Melver Idol, I am unfortunately not able to tell you the drop rate for Chris. Useful items for the cooking skill. First off, a useful item, of course, is the cooking skill cape, but if you're watching a cooking guide, I can only assume you might not have this. But nonetheless, it does give you a 100% chance to successfully cook an item, plus two global perfect cook chance, and a minus 15% cooking interval, which is insane, of course. Then we have the chef's hat, which is a 1% cooking skill XP, 1% uh, overall cooking skill XP and mastery XP and a minus 0.1 second cooking interval. You might be wondering how to get this. It's going to be through thieving the chef. So this might be something you want to do before you go too much into cooking considering it only requires level 34 thieving. And that brings us into the cooking apron which is also thieved from the chef or the cook's assistant which gives you also a 1% Cooking skill XP, 1% cooking master XP, and 20% food healing value, which might be good to wear this while you're thieving, actually, as well. Then we have the Ancient Rings of Skills, or Ancient Ring of Skills, I'm sorry. It grants you a plus 8% skill XP from non-combat skills, so this ring is a must-have. It's absolutely amazing, although it seems pretty rare because it's a 1 out of 6,722 from fishing. But if you do have a high fishing level, you might have this in your bank. It's one you don't want to miss. Last but not least, we have the cooking gloves. I almost forgot these bad boys because I didn't really see them on the wiki. Maybe I missed it. I don't know. Anyways, these bad boys are going to give you a 10% chance to successfully cook an item. 
it costs 50,000 gold for 500 charges for these bad boys. So it is kind of costly early game, but could be worth it for sure. So it's up to you if you want to make the decision to buy them. Then we have what I assume is pretty late game, Art of Control, which gives you a minus 15 percent cook interval but the requirements seem pretty hefty as it does cost 50 mil and the completion of fire god dungeon i can't talk too much on the fire god dungeon itself because i've never done it but it does seem pretty difficult uh the highest level being 815 so but i thought it was worth noting in the video because plus or minus 15 percent cook interval is pretty freaking good if you ask me and the last thing I would like to look at in this video are the possible modifiers from Astrology, since the wiki doesn't cover it. So there's some good modifiers for cooking in Astrology. Uh, this one is going to be in the Veil Tree, um, which I believe is like a level... Uh, I think like a level 50. Yeah, a level 50 tree, I believe. I might be wrong about that. Um... And if we view some more possible modifiers for cooking, we can see we get a plus 5% cooking skill XP, plus 5% chance to double items in cooking, and up to a plus 5% mastery XP in the standard modifiers. If we go down to unique modifiers, we find plus 5% food healing value, plus 5% chance to preserve food when eaten. Wow, that's cool. And then a minus 5% cooking interval from the unique modifiers. All right, without further ado, I want to thank everyone for watching this epic guide video a little bit more in depth. And if you're wondering why I did make this guide actually a little bit more in depth is because I wasn't fully satisfied with the quality of video I uploaded. I'm going to keep it on, but I'm going to update the thumbnail and everything like that uh, entitled to make it a basic overview of the cooking skill since it's not up to my quality for this channel. So I want to give a big shout out to Steel Sauce on the Reddit. Thank you, my guy, for helping me out. It means such a nice guy. If he wasn't so nice about giving me tips and stuff, I don't know if I would have even made uh, redone this video. So thank you for the information, and thank you for motivating me to keep going. And also, thank you guys for subscribing and watching. I'll have plenty more Melver content to come in the future, and I make a promise to you here and now to always be upping my quality of content. So thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe for more Melver related content and such.